In the 30s, they made steerable accessory lights um, based on some Indiana cars, like Auburn, Cord, Duesenberg. What? <laughs> yeah, so that idea was out there, but Preston Tucker wanted to incorporate it into his headlights. That is awesome. Yep. Pretty neat. Indiana, that took my breath away, like when you said that. Well, the, probably one of the best car museums out there is the Auburn Cord Duesenberg Museum. That is where the super high end stuff was designed and built in the depression i mean but it was the best those those are the cars that are the best of the best if you own a duesenberg i mean you have the best car ever made i mean in the 19th that's why jay leno has like seven or eight of them so he has like all these like he has many and they all, all these safest cars ever that they should make to this day well that was just one safety aspect of a, yeah. of a duesenberg or an auburn or a cord but if you look into the the interiors in the in the Tucker and you see the first padded dash ever made and so much room and that room, roominess was considered a safety feature. If you were going to have a crash, you weren't going to be smushed. You would survive or be able to stow away in all that spaciousness inside. But it has a rear engine, it's 589 cubic inches, and they were designed to have disc brakes. Some of the first ones did not fully have disc brakes, but after they got the kinks worked out of them, they did. Um, and it was, if you think about the era, yeah. 1948, and what he was trying to do, it was cool. Homie Tucker's. Take a guess at what they're worth. So that's the first one. So this is the first Tucker car. There was a pre-production car made. This was the first one that came off the prototype assembly line. So this is Tucker number one. And believe it or not, it was sold at a dealership that used to exist in Harrisburg. What? Yep. Harrisburg. Man, everything it's happens in Harrisburg. Lucky numbers with John Travolta. Five million dollars. The first Five Tucker years car. ago, they had all these appraised. <laughs> Five million, three million, two million. They made 51 of them. So Preston Tucker got this stuff going in the 40s. They made a movie about it that kind of was somewhat factual. He, 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 was, he was doing advanced sales, which at the he time was that, so wrong. It was considered fraudulent in the 40s. He'd say, come to the dealership and order your car. Pay me for most of it. And we'll make sure you get the radio and the luggage and the seat covers that are going to be available when your car shows up. And people were doing it. Because they, he advertised in all these fancy magazines during the day. Look at that. That didn't look like any other 40s car. And it, that thing did 100 miles an hour, had disc brakes, independent suspension, big 300, 589 cubic inch motor, and safety features. Everybody wanted them. So I guess the big three car manufacturers as well as the... Um, Okay, guys, tell Chad and his first members, members first dudes to come on down. All right, talk to you later. Oh, this was a test car. Oh, wow. So you're looking at things that most car manufacturers, if they make um, experimental or test items, a lot of times they're when they're done with them, they'll destroy them. They'll take them apart, use them for parts or what have you. Hmm. But the original Tucker, one of the original Tucker designs on this hydraulic engine was to eliminate drive components to make your car more reliable. So this engine has torque converters, which are the part of the transmission that take the engine movement and give you the speeds and transfer to the wheels. Huh. The torque converters were right on a drive shaft connected directly to the wheel. So your entire drive line was right there. It was put down into the car for a lower center of balance to make it handle. And this was the original Tucker plan to have a fuel injected engine with torque converters right near your wheel and your suspension. Now that's not what went into the production car. They went with something that was actually a, a redesigned Franklin helicopter motor that was adapted to be laid down horizontal and be water cooled. 
with a transmission that came from um, a cord, one of the Indiana-based car manufacturers. Cool. So this didn't make it to production. Oh, it didn't? No. This oh. was just a test chassis. And it was Torque an converters. engineering I've never, I've never thing. Seen anything like that. Torque converter, one on each wheel. Uh, yeah, it was I've pretty. Never seen like nope. That. Yeah. This test chassis ran and drove, but it was just the engineering of it. Um, I'm trying to see two on. Everybody looks at all the hydraulic tubing and stuff on there to see that how complicated that motor was to have hydraulically operated valves based on a hydraulic pump here and all the connections and fittings. I couldn't imagine if an engine like that actually got into production, you trying to trace down a leak. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm leaking some hydraulic fluid. Jeez. Okay, well, we have about 50 fittings. Let's go over all of them. Um, but I mean, it was a it was an aluminum engine, and it was made to dissipate heat because Preston Tucker and his engineers knew about you know with their racing history how how uh, vehicles really not only handled but um, would would continue to function after you would really use things hard like in a racing environment. So cool. So the engine is so low, like it's a, got like a low profile. Very much so. Yep. And if you look into the back of this car, I, I think this is illuminated. You can see in here. Yeah. Oh. Hey, Layton. Actually, we have some under. There were supposed to be some other lights in there that let you see in. But you can see how much room. I mean, this is a big car. There's the engine, the transmission's in front of it. And yet you still have a big interior. So if you were gonna put an engine in the back, you really had to, had to incorporate that down low into the car so it wasn't top heavy. I'm just gonna look at that light now. I'm blind. I'm seeing I'm like sorry. flashes. No, it's all right. It's okay. I have contact lenses, and that's why I'm like. We have Woo! some other lights that lay in there. I know they must have burned out or need service. Usually, we eliminate the whole uh, inside uh, engine area. So our, our Tucker dealership, you can come in here, and there are some interactive displays. Like the There's a phone down. message on there. You can press this down and it sings the the drive a tucker jingle um, but we have an interactive map built in here you can actually see where cars were actually sold what so Are yes you if you're like where was a tucker 48 actually sold you can say okay well look at the dealerships here in pennsylvania oh there was one in pittsburgh and there's one in harrisburg and there were a couple in New York. And the address and the location of it. Now, this is a work in progress. The map on the wall in back of you is all of the dealerships that were poised and ready to get a car or cars that never did. Oh, geez, so all of those, a lot. all of those pushmen, yeah, there's over 2,000. 2,000 people gave Preston Tucker money to become a dealership. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, it sucks. Oh my God, that's like almost bad. Those pushpins will become little blue dots on our interactive map here. Once we are done taking all the old paper records and putting them into a spreadsheet that we can put on this little website. So, interactive work in process. So you see a lot of other Tucker advertising, things that Preston Tucker sold to make money. Ashtrays, lighters, 
announcements, postcards, anything related to Tucker automobile, you're going to find it here. What's the briefcases? So, let's say you wanted, you found a dealership and you're like, I want a Tucker really bad. I don't care how much it costs. You know, what do I have to do? And they're like, sign up here, give us a thousand bucks. And they're like, what do you mean? The car's not here. And they're like, if you pay us X amount of dollars, going to guarantee you're going to get a car. And to prove that, you're going to get the luggage, the seat covers, and the radio so that you got physically something to guarantee you you were going to get your car. Oh, my word. So he was doing advanced sales. Oh. People didn't like that and they considered it fraudulent. Ah. So that is a set ah. of actual Tucker luggage that came with a car or maybe didn't come with a car because the cars weren't produced. Yeah. So if you think about it, there's probably more Tucker, way more Tucker radios, luggage sets and seat covers than there are actual Tuckers. Well. <laughs> so here's your radio so this radio mounted up in front of the firewall somewhere and that was the part that you tuned to the station that's a real tucker radio and there's another tucker radio inside that sealed box there's a tucker horn cap these are tucker stock certificates this is actually a B-stop, B-class certificate that they just found in the Tucker archives, which means it came from an officer of the company that wanted a Tucker car. Can you imagine working for the Tucker Corporation, knowing, I want a Tucker, I work here, but you never got one. I would be peed, yeah. oh, like I would, oh. Yeah. Or how about all these dealer, 2,000 dealerships that were ready to get the cars and couldn't? Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. It, oh my gosh. It's just a sad, sad story. It is. Did they ever get their money back or anything or everything, everything, everything lost? Everything was everything sold Everything lost. Off. Oh my gosh. Everything was sold off. Oh my God. I would highly be pedo. Oh, yep. Jesus. Well, when you realize how much, I mean, look at... So this is the video. This was actually a promotional film made in 1947 or 8. That is part of the bonus footage if you buy the movie on DVD. Yeah, I did, actually, and, at the gift shop. It, this shows you Preston Tucker's history, and it shows you them testing the car, rolling one over. Um, this was not really done by General Motors or Chrysler or Ford back in the day, you know, showing him wrecking a car or... Um, testing the car and trying to make it break at Daytona, you know, for, they took a Tucker 48 and they drove it for 24 hours to see if it would bust and it didn't. Jeez. Now, towards the end, it did roll over uh -huh. <laughs> and they proved that you could flip it over, change a tire that went flat, start the car and drive it away. Oh, wow. So it was all really revolutionary stuff. We have some other great items. These were dealer tags that the manufacturer owned that were on Tuckers at one time. God. And we've got some other interactive things for kids to come through here. Question and answer. Um, of course, you saw the interactive stuff that you can touch and, and do here. Unfortunately, you can't touch a tucker, but you can touch some other stuff in here. So we have shirts that are designed that say what this place is. It's the center of the Tucker universe. So there's people that are like, okay, that's cool. This design is neat, didn't go anywhere. And then there are some real fanatics that are just so into American cars, car culture. You cannot eliminate the Tucker from part of any type of American car manufacturing story. Guy wanted to make a car for everybody and got squashed. It's a shame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, honestly, I hate to say it, my mom, like, I like Hondas mm -hmm. because they're made for short people. And I, I have am a Honda short. Pilot in my garage, yeah. And she hates them. She's like, I swear to God, these, these China, and it is true. Because if I do run over something, there is this plastic piece in the bottom that <laughs> yeah. I have to pay like $300 for like twice a year just for them to pop it up. Take it off. Right. And she said, this is like the cheap China car you could ever make. So I kind of agree <laughs> that America does need to come back and make their own. That's, that's just tough. It um, is. It the, is. The Chevy, Chevrolet Volt that was supposed to save American car manufacturing. Uh, the only thing American about that car is where it's assembled. Mm. I mean, the battery technology is overseas. The engine is made somewhere else. The body parts are made somewhere else. It, that, that being an American car, to me, is bullcrap. <clears throat> gotcha. 
but um, and you, how many Chevy Volts do you see on the street? Every now and then you see one. I don't yeah. see lots of them like they were promising. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my sister that had a Chevy. That was supposed to be the, the modern car after oh, yeah. bailouts that was going to like just make the whole American car thing, re, you know, just take off. And I don't see them. And my sister had a Chevy Cobalt. I forget okay. what year. It was like a brand yeah, new one. And Cobalt, then she got rid of I think the Cobalt replaced the Cavalier. It was like yeah, a mid-sized she, car. So, yeah, yeah. That was a very, a, a, a General Motors or a Chevrolet mid-sized car is very popular. Mm. I mean, but this is like Brandon. This is like bite me about seven years ago. She got a Chevy Cobalt. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, Weren't they a little smaller? Yeah. yeah. That's why she traded it for a minivan. Because <laughs> she had three kids. So <laughs> she was like, so when so when they expect, so when they got a surprise that they were pregnant for like the third time, right? She That's was just great. like, I got to get rid of the Chevy Cobalt. She said, oh. the kids are in football because she got boys. Yeah. She's like, the kids are in football. I need their equipment plus their friends. Plus there's a baby. She said, I have no room for the Cobalt. So she traded it for a minivan. Yeah. Yeah. And she never and she always said, "I'm never going to be those moms that that, that drive a minivan." And here she was and driving. And end up doing it. Yep. So they considered like the first 25 cars kind of like ongoing changes or experimental. The biggest difference between this number one and the other cars you see is the the headlight sticks out further than the bumper. So if you park too close to a wall, you could the bumper didn't truly protect you. So they fixed that bumper spacing and and put a filler panel in the later cars, which you can see on the other ones on display. So if you park too close to the wall, it could have got smashed, is yep. what you're saying. Oh my yeah. gosh. <laughs> Little design flaw. They fixed it. The earlier Tucker cars had a rear gas tank, which had <laughs> access inside of a hinge out louver vent so you would uh, fill the gas in there yes the other cars have the gas tank up front and you can open up the door to get to the gas cap up front wait you would open up the front to get to the gas thing so if you look over at that copper colored car yeah there's a flap here like on the side of a truck mm -hmm. and the gas fillers in there well it sounds like my car because you have to if yeah. you want to see the hood you have to lift the lever where the driver's side is then you have to find these well, metal things and then pop goes the it's it's not something you pop you just control it with your finger it's over here on this car <laughs> gas flap Oh, okay. And you just flip flip it up and that's where the gas cap is. Jeez, So man. the earlier cars didn't have that. Gosh, I wish they still had some of the features that they made on Tucker Car on the day's yep. car, for real. Mm-hmm. It's in here. It's under that square compartment on that car. You flip that up and the gas cap's sticking at you. Like this here, like my car only, <laughs> it has a better, yeah. See, so yeah, luggage in the front. Ah, oh, now this is where we get to see the luggage. This one, it's I believe, drink. retains its original tire. Oh. That was an original tire. So, the, wait, this, that's the original? This is an original tire. That's that's why they left that in there. Oh, wow, that's the original it was tire. A spare tire, about. maybe one that was used on the car for a while. That's, well, you see, that's what I don't like about my Honda, because it's, like, low, and like I said, that plastic stuff, and... Yep. I just kind of wish I w they have some features of the Tucker car on today's cars. It would be a lot better. original hand-drawn designs. And here's a blueprint layout of the factory. The Tucker Corporation in 47. That time clock actually works? Yeah. Kids, Whoa. Kids can come in here and they can punch their time card <laughs> with, the actual, with the time clock from Tucker's factory right here. Get ready. Bim. <laughs> yep. That, is that was an actual factory time clock. 
you have the Tucker Automobile Club of America. There's a group of enthusiasts that own and people that don't own a car that are really into it. They, they come here, we have talks online, family history, car history. They always find out more neat stuff. Like even now when we're digging up uh, records to populate that, that uh, interactive map in there, yeah. like franchise numbers and things. We have people that contact us that say, hey, I think my uncle, grandfather, family member had a Tucker dealership. Can you see? Can you check? Well, soon we will be able to. And we have visitors here that know that they were in line to be a Tucker dealer and they were mad. You know, uh. they, they spent money to do that and get that affiliation they went through. So, um, yeah. A lot of, lot of cool history here. Sounds like it. So anyway, you need to be turned loose into the lower level or bus gallery. Okay. I had to fix that. That was bugging me. You have a $2 million, <laughs> $2 million car and the barricades are uh, not looking real good. So. Yeah, no. You, right. What you guys I, need is those metal ones that we work on. Uh, yeah. For that much. It would be, and here's the other thing, too, is those metal ones sometimes, let's say somebody trips, they push the metal one into the car, and they don't all have a bumper pad on it. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So this is what they chose to use in here. I didn't make the decision. I just go with no, it. I understand. No, I uh, honestly with this.